this is the modern legacy of Mount St. Helens. Inside the Cascades Volcano Observatory, Sally the robot weighs small crucibles holding sediment. The lab originally got started to help document all of the sediment that was coming down the Toodle River from the debris flow and the lahars from the 1980 eruption. The eruption blast released 3.3 billion cubic yards of earth from the mountain. Massive mudflows carried some of it 60 miles down waterways all the way to the Columbia River. It filled in the nav channel, so it was only 13 feet deep and stranded ships in the channel. And, and that was part of our emergency response was to dig those ships out. Tens of millions of cubic yards of sediment was dredged from the Columbia, Cowlitz, and Toodle Rivers over the following months. Further sediment erosion was expected for decades to come, creating concerns over river channels becoming blocked again and flooding in communities downstream. Around a million tons annually, sometimes even more depending on precipitation, snow melt, and things like that, it's still coming down the Toodle River to this day. The city of Castle Rock has had a lot of issues because of the silt. The banks that are there are eroding also in the winter. And we have here locally several lowland areas that just naturally will flood early on. In 1985, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers came up with a solution to reduce sediment as much as possible, building a sediment retention structure, or SRS, on the north fork of the Toodle River, raising levees downstream, and spot dredging as needed. So it was kind of a threefold attack on sediment management, and that's what's been in place ever since. And they're just now, and that was for like a 50 year horizon, which took us to 2035. The sediment retention structure is an earthen dam built across the Toodle River with a 400-foot wide spillway on one side. According to the Army Corps of Engineers, since its completion in 1989, it has trapped roughly 128 million cubic yards of sediment behind it, and more continues annually. They say the structure is now 70% full under its current phase of operation. It was originally designed to be taller than it is right now. And when we did a, a value management study on that, we decided we don't have to build the whole structure right now because we don't know how many years in the future we're going to need the full height of the SRS, if at all. The next phase for the structure includes raising the crest of the spillway. Two crest raises are planned, which would add a combined 23 feet of height. They also plan to put structures in upstream aimed at slowing the flow of the river, allowing sediment to settle out before reaching the SRS, and will do spot dredging if needed downstream. It's a plan they say balances cost and environmental considerations. The Army Corps of Engineers tells us they are currently awaiting funding to begin construction on the first crest raise. 20 miles upriver lies another drastic change to the landscape caused by the 1980 eruption. Part of the debris avalanche dumped into Sparrett Lake, raising it 200 feet and blocking its natural outlet to the Toodle River. Well, Mother Nature didn't turn the water spigot off in the sky and the lake level began to fill. As the water level in the lake rose, so did concerns that pressure could breach the now dammed up part of the lake, unleashing a catastrophic flood on communities downriver. The Corps decided to fly in a barge and 20 pumps and pump the lake to keep it at a safe level. In 1985, they constructed a more permanent solution, a 1.6 mile long tunnel that would allow water to drain out once it got too high. Now, 40 years later, the infrastructure is aging and geologic stresses have caused damage, needing major repairs in 1995, 1996, and again in 2015 to 2016. There are weak zones, they call them shear zones. Um, it's just that the rock there is, is less competent than the surrounding rock. And so those are the places where the tunnel's trying to deform and squeeze shut. And at, at, its, um, at its thickest, there's something like a thousand feet of rock above the tunnel. And imagine the weight of a thousand feet of rock trying to squeeze down on that tunnel. Each time the tunnel is closed for repair, it allows time for the lake to reach unsafe levels. I look at it as one of my four uh, rivers that that dam uh, is one of those things that uh, will keep me up at night if I have to uh, sound the evacuation notification. If that were to collapse, uh, Castle Rock, Kelso and Longview would be flooded. The majority of all of the cities.
Director of Cowlitz County Emergency Management Larry Hembry tells us an estimated 50,000 people would be impacted. If the Spirit Lake were to catastrophic fail, there is a possibility that the amount of water coming down the valley could top the 33-foot mark here on this river gauge. To get ahead of such a scenario, the National Forest Service is now leading the Spirit Lake Outflow Safety Improvement Project, evaluating alternatives. We've been looking at a lot of different options, whether it's using the tunnel, retrofitting the tunnel, or making some other changes to uh, allow for a more natural drainage out across the areas that don't go through the mountain. We're just looking at what's feasible and what's possible and trying to make the best decision for the downstream communities as well as the landscape itself. In total, nine different options are being considered, some of which could be paired together, so there's still a secondary flow option should one need repairs or stop working. Mark Smith's family owned and operated the Spirit Lake Lodge at Mount St. Helens. It was buried during the 1980 eruption. Twelve years later, he returned to the area and started Mount St. Helens Adventure Tours and later Eco Park Resort. And in keeping in my mom's memory, who created the original Mrs. Smith pies for our lodge in the 1970s, I make pie and it's scratch from homemade. Eco Park Resort offers the closest accommodations to Mount St. Helens and sits near the bank of the Toodle River, not far behind the sediment retention structure. They estimate that the sediment behind here, right behind the dam, is about 60 to 70 feet deep in here. Uh, those are the tops of the trees that you see here. While showing us the sediment plain, he describes the environmental impacts he has observed over the years. We're watching the area here become extinct, not because of nature, and not because of pollution, but because of, I think, poor decision making. One big impact, he notes, the SRS blocks fish passage up the Toodle River. The economy in this area before the eruption, uh, my family having Spirit Lake Lodge and, you know, this being a great recreational and fishing area, $22 million in 1980 fishery. The economy was good, but if you don't have a healthy environment, then your economy suffers because you don't have any of the resources that are there for recreation or gathering or, you know, habitat. A fish collection facility was built downstream from the SRS. The Army Corps of Engineers tells us on average between 100 to 300 fish are collected and relocated annually through it. There are plans to upgrade the facility and expand the number of species collected and relocated. But does that make sense or does it make sense to fix a natural fish passage so all species of fish can be transported up here on their own. We asked the Army Corps of Engineers if restoring natural fish passage around the SRS is feasible and something they would be open to considering in the future. They responded in part, we recognize that conditions in the watershed have changed over the past four decades and interest in ecosystem recovery and fish passage is growing. While restoring natural fish passage is not currently within the Corps' authorized mission for this project, evaluating future alternatives, including the potential for fish passage, would likely require a formal request from a non-federal sponsor, coordination with resource agencies, and additional congressional authority and funding. They add, we remain committed to partnering with local, state, tribal, and federal stakeholders to evaluate evolving priorities in the watershed. Mark also points out natural fish passage is no longer present at Spirit Lake either after the eruption dammed it off from the river, and fish are not able to pass through the drainage tunnel. He suggests an option that he says one day could restore that. So out of the options that they have, the only one that makes sense is to put in another pressurized tunnel so that they can have their control of the lake and then allow where the lake's starting to have seepage in the natural outlet. And then over the next 50 to 100 years, work on letting that develop with less intrusive enhancement and maybe doing nature-based engineering to work with nature there so that we could create that. In 2021, the Spirit Lake Toodle Cowlitz River Collaborative was founded. It's a consortium of government agencies like the Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Geological Survey, and Forest Service, along with nonprofits, researchers, and local tribes, among others. Their focus is working together to help address these ongoing impacts in the watershed. Mark is also a member of the collaborative as a private landowner. 
I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to increase our knowledge um, and, in, and do a paradigm shift in direction rather than trying to look at controlling a crisis mode situation. Jesse Satin, K2 News.